Hey friends, I've been working on a system where I need to react to changes on Cosmos DB. So the way that I decided to approach it is by using an Azure function that has a trigger for those changes. But the process was so painful. Azure functions changed so much in the recent years and the documentation is not that good. So I decided to come up with this video where we'll see how to build an Azure function with a trigger to react to Cosmos DB changes. And during the process, I will share with you some things that might be a problem. So let's do it. The first step is to create Cosmos DB. So let's create a database. I will create a NoSQL one, pick a region, give it a name and create it. This will take a few minutes. We'll be back once it's finished. Once it's done, let's go to the resource and let's quickly create the container. So inside of our database, we'll have a container. Let's create this items container just for the sake of our demo. So if we go to the data explorer, we can find the um, database and the items container that we mentioned. So if we go through the interface and we create a new entry, let's say doc one, doc something like this, doesn't matter. So we can create data here. So what I want to do now is to make sure that every single time that someone, some application writes into this container, I want to react to it and do something with it. On my case, it was, I want to pick this data and transform it and put it somewhere else. You can do it kind of like a messaging system. So this is kind of like having a, a queue that you are getting all the events of what is happening and reacting to those to do something with it. And for that, you have several options. The one that I will show you is by using Azure function. One possible way of doing it would be to go into your resource group and now let's create a new function. You pick the function, you create it. We can do it right now, give it a name. Let's say the runtime stack, we are using .NET here. So let's move this to Europe and you can pick the operating system that you want, create it. Okay, it's already deploying it. I will be back once it's finished. And inside of the function, you can find these options here. So we could decide to create them through here. You can do exactly the same inside of your IDE, often by installing a given plugin. For example, I have the plugin on my VS Code. So on VS Code, I can open the command window and ask for Azure Functions, create a new project. I will say it's a C Sharp language, Net8. And now I have several templates. And one of them is the Azure Cosmos DB trigger. So as you can see, we have several types of triggers. Give it a name, namespace as well, and let's create a new local app setting, okay? You will see what does that mean in a few minutes. So create a new one. It will ask you for the um, subscription, the Azure subscription. You pick the database account. As you can see, you can do every single thing through here. I will explain all the magic in a moment. Now I need to give the database name that was to do list, the container name that was items, and it will create the baseline of the structure. So once it's done, what you will have is something like this. So you have the program CS where it's the host builder basically for the Azure function. Then you will have the function that you created. I named it on change. So I have here the onChange.cs. The onChange.cs has several things. So one of them will represent the document. So it's the thing that I'm expecting to receive. It should represent the structure of the data that is inside of Cosmos DB. So in my case, I don't have any other field besides the ID. Let me throw those away. And besides that, I'm receiving the logger just for the sake of blogging what is happening. And then I have this attribute, the Cosmos DB trigger that has a set of parameters that we need to pay close attention to them. So let's see them one by one. The first one is the database name. So this is the name of the database that I'm observing. By the definition of the Cosmos DB trigger and by saying this is the database, this is the container, now he knows that he will connect to a given Cosmos DB instance and will be looking exactly into that database and that container. Because inside of a single account, you can find, for example, several containers. You need to specify which one do you want to react to. Then we have this connection. And this is one of the things that can be quite tricky. So we'll get back to them in a moment. And besides that, we have this lease container name and create lease container if not exists. The leases are 
basically a container for control. So basically, Cosmos DB will need a way to control if we should trigger this function or not. And the leases will be one way of controlling that. So let's use this image to understand what will happen and why do you need the leases. So we'll be changing the Cosmos DB data here, and then there's a kind of like a change field, okay? A field of the things that have been changing inside of your container. Then you can have a Cosmos DB trigger. However, if that trigger is a Azure function that is stateless, that is something that can scale, we need a way to make sure that we don't have all the functions triggering because of a, a single change. So by using that leases container is the way that now our system can understand how to dynamically scale the functions, the trigger functions, without having a huge impact in the system. Because by having that, those leases, you have kind of like a, a state control where the multiple instances can know what has been processed already. And if something goes wrong, we know where we need to pick the, the job to do after the last entry in the change that has been processed. So it's one way to make sure that we can scale the system and ensure that we don't start losing entries from that feed. The cool thing is that by defining that you want to create the least container if none exists, you don't need to think about it. You just give it a name and it will do the magic for you. So once you have that, you will have here the input object that has a set of data, okay? So it's a collection. You will go through it, you will send it to somewhere, you will write into a database, you will can update another Cosmos DB container if, if you need. But that is the thing that for sure you already know how to do it. The thing that can be tricky from my experience usually starts here with the connection. So if we search inside of this source code by this thing that was generated, the value that you can find here is basically a pointer to the app setting that you want to use to collect that data, okay? So basically is the pointer to the connection string to Cosmos DB. So we can go here and call it something like Cosmos DB connection. With that in place, we can now deploy this function. So I'll use the command to deploy to the function app, pick my subscription, pick the function, and it will start the deployment to Azure. Once it's on Azure, I will show you how to configure that connection but also another trick that is quite handy. While this is deploying, let me tell you that if you want to test the connection locally, you can go to this local settings.json and you can see there that that first name that was generated, this one, is already there with the connection string for the thing that I have on Azure. So on this case, since I renamed it because I didn't like that name, I just need to go there and change that configuration. Okay, the first attempt failed, but I tried again and I deployed the Azure function. Now, when you go into the portal, you can find here in the functions, the trigger right there. So the on change. And if I hide myself here, you can also see that I have the status and the monitor. So we'll click in those invocations and more, and we can see it was not executed already. But in order to see this running, we need to do one thing, that is go into the configuration. So we go to the environment variables, app settings, and we'll add a new one. So grab the connection string and also that name that we added to the connection, the key to access the app settings. So you have that on the DB trigger. Apply that and confirm the changes. So save the environment variables. And let's go back into our data explorer for Cosmos DB, go into those items and let's change our document by adding something here. Let's save it and I will add a new entry. Here. So doc2, save it. One thing that is uh, important, and this thing was not working because I missed it, is the casing of the database name and the container name. So first I have written it like this. It should be like this, okay? So I'm redeploying it so we can finally pick the changes. That is the type of thing that is painful during this process. If you have a small mistake like this, you have no idea what, what is happening, why the code is not reacting. So let's deploy this one and check it again. So what should you do when you have something like this, when you have made a mistake and you can see the code running, you can see the triggers there, but nothing is happening. You have 
two things that I usually do. One is you go into the trigger, then you go into the integrations, and inside of the integrations, you can click on trigger. There, it will open this window where you can try to see if there's any mistake in the configuration there. Okay, you have a list of fields there, you can try to understand that way. The other one that I like to use is to go into the database explorer and see if the list is has been created already. So inside of the database that you are connecting, you should have a new container with the name Lizis. With that in place, go into your item, items again, change something, save it. Let's go into our Azure function. Now we can see the logs coming in. So this is the logs that we have in, in that Azure function, the ones that we have written. That one is by the Azure function itself. So we can see that there was one execution. If we go there and we create a new entry, for example, and we save it, go into the logs, we will see it coming once again. And then after a few minutes, okay, we have it here. After a few minutes, we can go into the invocations. We need to wait up to five minutes and then we'll start seeing those lines here. While that doesn't happen, let me explain you another thing. At the point of recording, the way that the change feed will work, you will not capture deletions, okay? So if someone goes into the, the data and deletes an entry from the Cosmos DB, you will not get the trigger running because there's no change for that. This is one of those features that everyone is asking for. So there was one initiative in progress. I think the feature in theory will come or it's already in preview. I'm not sure. But in the meanwhile, what you can do is to design your system to use a flag to represent the deletion. So basically soft deletes. Instead of deleting the, the entry, you go there, you set a flag saying this is deleted. And now you know that the change will happen. This is not the ideal. We, we know that, but there's one way to design the system to deal with it. Otherwise, you will not capture that change. Okay, so after a few minutes, once we get back, we can already see the invocations there. You can see how long that they took to run, the date, if it was successful or not, all that information. But I promise you another useful tip when you are defining the connection, and let me show you now. So. Ideally, you would not come here into the environment variables and set the connection string here. So what's the ideal way of doing this? The ideal way is by using a key vault that is the proper place to store secrets. So let's create a key vault and show you what you can do here in order to use the key vault setting for this connection string. So let's create a new key vault give it a name and create it. So create a new secret, give it a name and give it a value. So the connection string, paste it there and create it. Now that we have the connection string here, we want the trigger to start getting the connection string from here. And now can we do that since he's basically looking inside of the app settings. So without changing any code, we can just change the configuration and point to here. How can we do that? Go back into your function, environment variables, and on that property with the connection string, let's edit it. And now let's use something like this. At Microsoft.KeyVault, where the secret URI is equal to HTTPS, and here let's put the name of our key vault. It is this one, paste it there. So basically this is the URI for the key vault. Then you do the slash secrets slash Cosmos DB, that is the name of our secret. So save it, apply. Once you have that in place, the Azure function will try to get that setting based on that name on the attribute as we have seen. Then what we'll do is that we'll check inside of this app settings. This definition that we set will act as a pointer to the correct place. So it will grab those connection strings from the key vault as it should be. I hope this was useful and now I think you'll like to watch this video right here.